All right. Good afternoon and welcome. Land and expand the, the five add-ons you need from Sage Intact. Today, I will be your moderator. My name is Kate Watts. I am the Client Services Manager for Maynard Kasterison. I am so pleased to have the opportunity to introduce today's speaker. That is Linda Pinion. Linda is a fantastic asset to us. She comes directly from Sage Intact. I have enjoyed working with her even on this little project here. And I am very excited to use all of her knowledge and over a decade worth of experience. So Linda, I'm gonna go ahead and have you take it away from us today. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Kate. And thank you all. As Kate said, our, our topic today is land and expand. And, and this is a topic that I really enjoy delivering to folks who are already using Sage Intact. We're going to focus today on the five add-ons that you need from Sage Intact. Now, certainly, uh, there may be some other things that you're interested in, but we wanted to focus on these five things. And when you think about landing and expanding, really what comes to my mind is it's about protecting your investment. For those of you who have been on Sage Intact for some time, or even folks that have uh, been on the solution maybe the last six or eight months, you know, you're still maybe winding up or finishing your implementation. This is an investment that you've made in order to meet your business requirements. And one of the things that you've probably heard about in some of our other events is all about the intelligent general ledger. And today what I want to do is I want to take that a little bit further and incorporate what we're calling the intelligent organization. And what does that mean to you? And how does that incorporate continuing to automate processes and improve efficiencies in your business? It's, it's all about increasing time to benefit. And this is a term that you may not be uh, totally familiar with. You may not have heard it a lot, but it's really um, about making sure that you are benefiting and, and being productive in the most efficient way. And this is really all about utilizing data, whether it's in the reports or graphs or in the visual data that you look at to embrace digital transformation. So I put together a, a little session today on what I'm calling Take Five. So Take Five is going to focus on five key areas of the Sage Intact footprint, Sage Intact budgeting and planning, spend management, dynamic allocations, and the interactive custom report writer. The fifth one here is really not an application per se. It's what we call our environment sandbox. And for some of you, you may be familiar with this when you first implemented, you had this sandbox. I want to revisit that topic today. So this is what our take five will encompass. As I talked earlier about the intelligent general ledger, so think about how our chart of account is structured. Think about uh, how we use dimensions to tell the story of the transaction. And when you think about an intelligent GL, now we're incorporating AI, artificial intelligence, and machine learning. And, you know, a little quick sidebar, until I fully understood, you know, machine learning and artificial intelligence, I thought maybe it had something to do with jewelry, but I discovered very quickly that it was not uh, jewelry, it was more of a technical thing that could help me understand the patterns in the data that I was entering and could also help identify when I was about to maybe make a mistake or code something incorrectly. So having this intelligent GL really fostered us having an intelligent organization. And the intelligent organization gives you that holistic view of every area of the business and how we're able to help every area of the business, whether it be around identifying uh, people that you need. So what does your headcount look like and how do you budget and plan for those people? 
uh, what is going on in the finance department and how are you able to really utilize that data and see that data in different ways? And then of course, analytics. It's all about making sure that you have that quick business insight. So when we start thinking about how can some of these other applications help us, we look at the first area, which is budgeting. And as all of us who have been part of the budgeting team know that it is a team sport. One person in an organization typically is not the person doing the budgeting. It takes a team of people to do this, or in some uh, some cases, maybe it takes a village to do budgeting. So we're excited to present to you an all-in-one budgeting and planning solution that's going to help you dramatically improve your ability to collaborate closely on that budgeting and planning with all of your team members. So in summary, you know, what we're talking about here is budgeting and planning that's streamlined and streamlined meaning that it's going to give you the ability to analyze, plan, report, and forecast. And it's going to do this all in one place. Now, one of the things that everyone's really excited about is, you know, we have basic budgeting in Sage Intact today. That's part of your core functionality. When we look at Sage Intact budgeting and planning, this is a separate subscription. It allows us to do things that we are not able to do in that basic budgeting. Things like a what if scenario, or to create rolling forecast, or to look at some in-depth budget versus actual forecasting and reporting capabilities. You know, for all of us that have been involved in budgeting, most of us have done this through Excel. And, you know, Excel is a great tool. It allows us, for one thing, because most of us know Excel, there's no learning curve. We know how to use the tool. Uh, we've gotten pretty savvy at it. So we're fast and we're quick. Uh, however, when you think about budgeting, you're looking at multiple people working on a spreadsheet and trying to keep up with who's done what and what is the most current version. And then how do you take all of these spreadsheets and marry them together and not make a mistake? It becomes a, a real pain and it, it kind of becomes a nightmare to make sure that you really have done this without making any mistakes. So introducing Sage Intact budgeting and planning means that we're going to give you a better way to do collaboration so that you don't have to go through this spreadsheet nightmare. Uh, being able to do all of your forecasting and your what if analysis, creating different types of scenarios. Um, what if something changes? What if something goes up by a percentage? If I apply that change, what would that do to my budget? So giving you that vision to see what would happen in these different scenarios. Also giving the, you the ability to do more complex calculations. And of course, along the way, making sure that we are capturing everything in an audit trail so that you can get the detailed reporting that you need. Now, one of the best things that I can tell you today is that this solution is a bi-directional solution. So when we look at it, we're looking at, at pushing data and pulling data. So back and forth between budgeting and planning. You know, it's a pre-built connection and it's built to connect directly with those Sage Intact financials. All you need to do to get started is to import your dimensions and your actuals to your Sage Intact budgeting and planning module. And then what you're able to create are budgets, run those budgets versus actual reports, do all of those what if analysis, build the complex models, and then create forecasts. So you really have the power to export your budgets right back in to Sage Intact. It's just that simple. 
So if you take a look at this um, slide, you know, on one side we have the pains and on the other side we have the benefits. So obviously we don't want to keep any of those pains. We want to eliminate those. So you're going to go from painful to powerful. No longer will you need to copy and paste your budgets and actuals into those spreadsheets because now with just a few clicks, you'll be able to send all that information over from Sage Intact with that pre-built connection. The spreadsheets, you know, a lot of the spreadsheets are not set up for what if scenarios. Now with Sage Intact budgeting and planning, you'll be able to run unlimited what if scenarios and you can do that on the fly whenever you choose to. You're investing, well, I guess I shouldn't say investing, you're spending because you're really spending time building those budgets and plans by entity. Now you'll be able to do that in minutes over on the Sage Intact budgeting and planning side of the house. And being unable to make those timely budget versus actual reports and views. Now those are very easy for you to do. It's easy for you to reforecast and to create the rolling forecast. So we want to help you move from painful to powerful. Now, this application was released quite some time ago. You may not have had the need for it, or you may not have really gotten all the benefit in learning about it. And with any new application that we release, this is really true. We start out sometimes a little slow in the takeoff. Uh, we put the necessary functionality in and then we wait for feedback from you. And based on that feedback, we continue to build out that application. And that's exactly what's happened with budgeting and planning. So as we move forward in our quarterly releases, from time to time, you'll see enhancements and more functionality coming in these solutions. In Sage Intact Budgeting and Planning, again, we're continuing to enhance it. We're creating more budget structure options via the wizard. Uh, we're including statistical accounts now. We're enabling this for single sign-on. And we're creating some user management tools for the administrators. One of the most important things that we're doing is we are scaling with you, the customer, which means that we are opening this up so that you can budget for larger size organizations. So making sure that you're able to budget across multiple dimensions and across multiple accounts and not setting any limits on that. So if that's something that you encountered in the past, know that we are continuing to build out Sage Intact budgeting and planning so that you won't have any of those roadblocks. So the next Take 5 application is around spend. So I would ask you, are you out of control? Are you recognizing that you don't have a good handle on your spend, that perhaps when you look at some of these actual versus budget numbers, that you're seeing that you're way over budget in a lot of different categories. You know, one of the things that I found that was interesting is the Everest group, which is, is like an analyst group. This is a research group. They uh, produced a paper uh, a couple of years ago, actually, and this paper said it was all about controlling spend. And this paper said that if you can reduce your non core or your indirect spend by five to 10%, that translates into a one to 3% bottom line impact. So, just to break that down, an indirect spend could be something like supplies. It could be um, kitchen supplies, office supplies, anything that you are not using within your business to sell. So things that you are consuming. And when you think about this, every dollar that you save is a dollar that moves to the bottom line. And this can be pretty impactful. And for those of you who are 
utilizing Saijin Tact in a multi entity configuration, which I would tell you that most people that are using Saijin Tact are, you may not be aware of all of that spend within each entity. You may not be comparing that spend across entities. And for some of you, you might be surprised at how much that amounts to. So I would encourage you to, to really take a look at spend management and, and look at some of the things and listen to some of the things that I'm going to point out here, because this could be something that uh, could really impact how your, your spend is being managed. And, you know, the real question is, what will you do with the extra savings? So when you think about um, spend management, one of the things that you should know is when you configure spend management, you're going to be integrating with a company budget. So here's that budget again. So you're going to have a budget that you're going to point to, that you're going to say, I want my comparisons to be against that budget. What's going to happen then is it's going to give you insight at the time of the entry. So when spending actually occurs, it's gonna look at the budget for that account and it's gonna identify, do you have the funds available? Now, when it makes that determination to see that you have funds or not, based again on the configuration, it can stop you if you don't have the funds and not let you move forward or it can give you a warning. And again, this is something that is happening at the transaction level. So we're not gonna let things go and then come back and tell you at the end of the month, oh, guess what, you're over budget. We're gonna tell you at the transaction level. It's really gonna help you create a better control and a better process. And you know, just to be clear, a lot of times people when we talk to them, they say, you know, we want a better way, a better process. How can Sage Intact help us with that? And so spend management is one of those applications that can certainly do that. So a few other things about that validation that's occurring. So it's looking at the budget. It's looking at the start date, the duration. It's looking at the dimensions. And it's also looking at specific transaction definitions. So think about it this way. It could be looking at purchase requisitions as a transaction definition, or if you don't use purchase requisitions and you start that process with a purchase order, it could, it could look at the purchase order transaction definition. It can also include committed expenses. So for those of you who possibly uh, before spend management was released, you used the user defined books and you set up a user defined book called committed and you were posting transactions into that committed book and then doing releases, you can also identify in the configuration whether you want committed in that calculation or not. Again, just to reiterate, stop or warn notifications. So again, when you are at the transaction level, it's going to look and it's going to say, here's the budget. Here's the actual. Here's the committed, if you've chosen to show that. Here's this purchase, so what you're trying to purchase today, and here are the funds available. Based on the configuration, if you are not able because you don't have the funds available, it's going to come up with a warning. You can continue on with a warning, and it will still send a notification to your budget administrator and your budget administrator is someone that you name in that configuration. If it is uh, set to a hard stop, then you will not be able to go forward with this transaction. It will, of course, send a notification to the budget administrator. Now, I would just tell you that in talking to customers that most people are setting this notification to warn because they want people to go ahead and continue with their purchase. They don't want to slow up the process because usually people are buying things that they need uh, and they need them right away. 
However, uh, what they want to make sure of is that they know that these things are occurring. So that's where the, the notification comes in. And then, of course, noting that uh, this is against dimensions. So you can validate the budgets by any dimension. And those can be those predefined dimensions. Or if you have any user defined dimensions set up, you could point to those as well. So we talked a, a little bit about committed expenditures, just a little bit more here that uh, you can certainly set those up. You can include those. And, you know, what happens here, just in case you've not seen this in action, when you're at the transaction level, there's a little dialogue window that says spend insight. And when you click on that spend insight, it's a window that has all of the, the numbers in it. So it has the budget, it has the committed, it has the actual, it has the funds available. So it's like a little window into where the spend is at this moment. And you will never see that spend insight dialog box unless you have subscribed to spend management. So until you subscribe, you won't see that window. But in that window is where you would also see those committed numbers. If you change the budget, then it changes going forward. It does not go back and affect any of the past transactions that were affected by that budget change. And of course, as I mentioned, with a single click, you can see that spend insight window and you can see all of the detail of this particular transaction and how it has been measured back against that budget. Now, before we leave this topic, I, I do want to share this workflow with you because sometimes people are not aware of functionality that has been opened up or released during one of our quarterly releases. And I created this, this diagram because I think a visual is the best way to explain this. So first of all, I want everyone on the phone to know that purchasing is part of your core bundle in Sage Intech. So if you are an organization or company that does not use purchasing, that's okay. However, it is part of the core bundle and you could start using it at any time. And if you're not using it today, but you think maybe you might want to, that would be a great opportunity for you to go back to the team at Maynard and say, you know what, we want to revisit purchasing and we want to see how we can incorporate that in to our process. Now, purchasing has always been attractive because it has pre-built workflow approval in it. And that's important. But I also want you to know that you can do AP, Accounts Payable Bill Approval, as well. So this diagram is really saying you can do approvals whether it comes through Accounts Payable or it comes through purchasing. Now, the other piece to that is you can lay spend management, what we just covered, on top of that. So if you want more control and you want to make sure that you're, you're focused back against that budget, then spend management is what you need to look at. But in reality, what a lot of people are doing is that hybrid model. So some things go through accounts payable, some things don't ever touch purchasing at all. And then there are some, some things that you buy, you want to enter a purchase order. And you can certainly use both AP and purchasing and have that workflow approval. And then you can also incorporate spend management. So choose the, the model that works best for you, but know that you have some options. And again, if you have questions about those options, make sure to reach out to your Mainer team. So number three, interested in closing the month faster. Who is not interested in getting that monthly task done quicker? I know I was part of the the closing team when I was in the accounting department. And that meant no personal time off. That meant that, you know, you, you stayed in and did whatever you had to do to get the month closed. And in my uh, company that I was at, we had to do that within the first five working days of the next month. So, uh, you know, anything that would have helped us would have certainly been welcomed. 
And one of the areas in Sage Intact that really helps you at the end of the month is to take advantage of an application called dynamic allocations. So if you think about allocations, this is really a way for you to get a true picture of, you know, what your performance is from an analysis and, and uh, gaining uh, visibility into uh, fully loaded costs for departments and projects and, and that sort of thing. And so, you know, at the end of the month, what we would do is we would basically do this diagram manually. We would take all of the money that had been posted in a certain account and we would apply some rules to it and calculate out what that allocation should be. And then we would create a manual journal entry. Well, with dynamic allocations, we're going to automate this process. And that's going to save you time at the end of the month so that you're not doing these manual journal entries. It's really the same thing that we did manually uh, by taking that source or that um, bag of money, if you will, and applying a basis and a target to it in order to get an end result with a journal entry. Now, we're going to create that journal entry for you, and it's going to have drill down to the source and basis. You know, when you identify uh, the source transactions, you're really focusing on on those transactions that need to be allocated. When you look at the basis, the basis is the method in which you're going to calculate the allocations. And then when you look at the target, you're going to target the book to record where you want those allocated amounts to appear. And then having that drill down from the journal entry. So I wanted to give you a, a quick screenshot here. You'll find this in the general ledger application and it is uh, a, a way for you to set up multiple uh, allocation IDs here. So this is an allocation that I've set up for other benefits and you'll have several sections here that you will populate with information on how to make that calculation. So identifying the dimension, identifying the source and the basis. And then when the journal entry is created, you'll see that you'll have a journal entry with drill down. So it will automatically create the, all the debits for that allocation. And then of course the offsetting credit. You'll also, you'll notice there, there is a history tab. So we are tracking uh, who made this transaction, and you'll have the date and time as well with that. Now, one of the things that I also want to mention here is we have always had what we call transaction allocations. So don't confuse the two. If you've been using Sage Intact for some point in time, you may have already taken advantage of transaction allocations. They are in the general ledger as well. And you can set up as many allocation rules or templates as you choose to. And these can be used across AP purchasing and GL. So as an example, if you got a bill in from a professional services company and you wanted to allocate or distribute that across multiple entities and or um, departments, let's say, you could set up a transaction allocation rule and apply it at the time you enter the transaction. And it would, based on how you set it up, either allocate by percentage, by exact amount, or by a fixed amount with an over or under logic. It will do the math for you, basically. So you wouldn't have to enter that invoice multiple times. You'd enter it once, and it would go ahead and make the, the allocation or distribution for you. You'll post that. And you'll post that, that transaction and all of this allocation will post in the background. So if you're used to using transaction allocations, perfect. You can go ahead and use that. But for those more advanced types of allocations, you're going to want to look at dynamic allocations. And you're also going to want to understand that it's going to automatically create those journal entries for you. So you don't have to do that. One other thing that I want to mention about dynamic allocations is the fact that we have 
now in a um, release, I believe it was R3, we released the ability to go across entities and base currencies. So this was part of the enhancement that we've made to make sure that now you can cross entities and base currencies automatically. Same functionality exists, but we didn't have this to begin with. So we wanted to make sure that we were addressing that in the enhancement. So our next uh, area is around transforming the data. And, you know, one of the things that uh, is important to note is that everyone says, oh, I, you know, we can't get to the data. We, we have some data and we can't get the reports out that we want. Well, newsflash, we have more data today than we've ever had. That's a, a known fact. We have more data than we've ever had. The challenge is, how do we get to that data? So how do we access our data and how do we access information? So in Sage Intact, we have several ways for you to get to the data. One way is through the financial reporting. So we have a financial report writer. We also have a custom report writer. And those tools are ones that come with the core bundle. In addition to that, we have now released a more advanced report writing tool. It's called the Interactive Custom Report Writer. And this is a report writer that allows you to do uh, more complex reporting. So it's an advanced way. We also have something called a data delivery service over here on the right hand side. And that's another way for you to extrapolate data out of Sage Intact and push it into a data warehouse. Now, I'm not going to cover the next two slides in detail, but I want you to know that they will be in the deck that you get. And I put them in there intentionally because I wanted you to have access to this information. The information here points out exactly what report type we have offered in Sage Intact and the capabilities within that tool. So as an example, if you look at the first box there, it's the financial report writer. And it's part of our core solution. And some of the capabilities there are being able to do out of the box and custom reporting. Uh, out of the box, we have about 30 financial reports that are there when you implement. You can do things like budget comparisons. You can group things together by your chart of accounts or by dimensions or by time. So um, giving you the ability to do financial reporting with drill down. And examples of those reports might be balance sheets, profit and loss reports, statement of cash flow. So this kind of gives you an idea Here's the tool, here's some of its functionality or capability, and here's some examples of why you would use it. There's two screens here. So you've got two full screens of reporting tools and areas within Sage Intact. Now, when we think about what is an advanced writing, an advanced report writing tool, we wanna introduce what we're calling the interactive custom report writer. Well, what is that tool? Well, it's a purpose-built report writing tool. We, we released it in R4 of 2018, so it's been out for a good while now. It is what's commonly referred to as a WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. So what that means to you is as you are building reports, you will be able to see what the report looks like. You'll have drag and drop functionality, so you can include the fields that you want, and then you can move them around. You can change their position. You can change what they do. You can create complex calculations in those columns. You can do all your grouping and subtotaling and formatting. And then at the end, you can export this to PDF, Excel, or PowerPoint. So the good news about um, ICRW, so I'll start using the acronym, Interactive Custom Report Writer, is that you will have a reporting library. So if you remember back to the financial report writer, you have about 30 reports there. With ICRW, we're giving you 60 
reports in a reporting library. And they're segregated and, and put in by application. So you can see the first portion there are accounts payable, and then we move to AR. So these reports are there and ready for you to use day one. You can use them straight up or you can copy these reports and use them as a template. In addition, I wanted to share an example. So let's think about this for a minute. Perhaps you are uh, part of the accounting team and you're familiar with a standard report that we have in Accounts Payable, which is an aging. Everybody knows what a vendor aging report looks like. In Sage Intact, when you execute that report, you have two options. You can execute it in summary. You can execute it in detail. Now, when you choose summary or detail, it's one or the other. It's not both, which means that it would be two separate reports that you would get. One would be summary. One would be detail. With ICRW, what I've done here is I've combined those two reports into one. So on the left-hand side of the screen, you see basically the summary information. And you probably can't see in detail, but neighborhood printers and stationery is the one that I have highlighted on the left-hand side. It shows me the buckets for the aging, and it shows me the summary for that particular vendor. On the right-hand side, it then shows me the detail. So it shows me all of the invoices and credit memos that make up the detail of that summary number. So as I'm changing on the left-hand side, it's changing on the right-hand side and showing me all the detail. So this is just one quick example of something that you can do with ICRW that you cannot do within the standard or custom report writer. Now, one also important thing that you should note about this report writer is that there are two different kinds of users. What we find is that in many organizations, there are one or two people that are report generating savvy folks, meaning that, you know, it's kind of part of their DNA. They like to create reports. They like to go in and play with the data, and they're really good at it. And for those types of users, we have a subscription that's called a power user which means you would be able to create reports and execute reports with ICRW. In other organizations, we find that maybe there isn't anyone that's really savvy with reporting. However, do you still see the value of ICRW? You'd still like to take advantage of a lot of those reports that are in the library, those 60 plus reports, and have that that extra way of, of getting data out of Sage Intact. So in that case, we've set up a different type of user. We call it a consumer rather than a builder. And the consumer then has the access to the report library. However, they can only execute reports. They cannot build reports. Now you might be thinking, well, that's great, but what if I want some certain special report. How would I get that report? Well, there's a great option for you. Maynard has a team of folks within their services organization that will be happy to build those reports for you. So you can still get those reports that are important to you built to your specifications through a statement of work with your Maynard team. And then you can have access to those 60 reports in the reporting library. All of that as a consumer. So think about, you know, what makes most sense for you. Talk about this with your internal team and with the Mainer team. A report builder, a report consumer. Either way, no matter which way you choose, you have access to those 60 reports in that reporting library. So now we're to the last one of our take five. And this is the one that's fun, right? Because everyone likes to play and playtime is good. Uh, most important in this season that we're in right now, making sure that you're taking breaks and, and having those mental, uh, mental breaks so you're not getting bored or burned out by working virtually. And, you know, one of the things that 
many of you probably experienced early on when you implemented Sage Intact was using something called a sandbox. And a sandbox is an exact copy of your production environment. So this is going to be pretty instrumental when you're implementing because it's going to give you the ability to do your testing and your scripting and uh, maybe even set up a conference room pilot. Uh, it's a great way for you to uh, be testing and defining and designing as you are implementing uh, without impacting your production environment. It's a copy of that environment. And typically, um, you know, after go live, we see some organizations and companies, you know, kind of not using the sandbox. And what I want to encourage you to do is to revisit that and think about what benefit having that sandbox could bring to your organization. And for many people, uh, because organizations are constantly changing, you have people that are uh, leaving, people that are new people that are coming in, maybe you're acquiring other businesses, uh, maybe you're going to take advantage of some of the Take 5 and you're going to implement a new application, one that you didn't have before. Uh, maybe your business is changing and you're looking at more of a global footprint. So lots of things change in an organization. And having a sandbox is going to give you the ability to do that playing and that testing to define what those processes should look like. Now, a couple things that I want to point out here. Um, releases are still Sage Intax responsibility. So when you uh, go through a release, like we're getting ready to go through a release on Sunday, November the 15th, in case you've forgotten, it is not Friday this week. It is Sunday. We did that to accommodate some holiday schedules so that uh, we would not impact some of our customers. So it will happen on Sunday instead of Friday. But, but the point is, we're going to take care of doing that release. Now, when you look at your environment, you may want to turn on some functionality. You may want to build out some things in your environment. That will still be your responsibility in your sandbox as well. No different than it is in your production environment. But the release itself will impact both your production environment and your sandbox. Now, there's a lot of of return on your investment here. Um, I like to say it's sometimes return on impact. So it's impactful for you to have a sandbox so that you can do your, your testing and you can do uh, all of your playing in your sandbox so that when you implement something in production, you can feel comfortable that you are protecting the investment that you've made that you're not going to go backwards, that you're not going to have any missteps because you have thoroughly vetted this out in your sandbox. So just a, another uh, way for you to protect your overall investment in Sage Intact. So in closing, I just want to remind you of the take five that we reviewed today, Sage Intact budgeting and planning. Remember that the great benefit there is that this is a pre-built connector. It's going to eliminate a lot of that spreadsheet nightmare that you're in today. It's going to allow you to do a lot more of your forecasting, your what if scenarios, your analysis is going to be much deeper in utilizing this new tool. Spend management. If you want to try to get your spend under control, make sure that you are bouncing those purchases back against a budget, spend management is the solution you should look at. Dynamic allocations, being able to allocate based on a particular basis and um, source pool and, and making sure that you're improving that end of month process, speeding that up, will create that journal entry automatically for you with that full drill down. And then take a look at your reporting. Look at how you're reporting today. Maybe get together with folks and find out what are you missing? Why are you not getting what you need out of uh, financial reporting or out of the custom report writer? 
Uh, what else do you need? Interactive custom report writer may be that answer. And then certainly uh, think about the sandbox. For those of you who had it at the beginning and perhaps did not renew it, you may want to go ahead and do that today. Go ahead and get that environment sandbox and just make sure that you are testing everything out before you go live in your production environment. So on behalf of Sage Intact and myself, I wanna thank you so much. Thank you, Kate, for the invitation and thank you all for your continued support of Sage Intact. Sure. And one of the things that I, um, I talked to one of our other um, customers who was using uh, SIBP and, you know, we talked a lot about some of the things that companies were experiencing during, I call it this new season of, of how we're doing business. And one of the things that she told me was, she said, you know, when, when COVID hit, we had already done our budgeting and um, we realized pretty quick, we were going to have to do some, some adjustments to that budget and she said, we had already subscribed to, to Sage Intact Budgeting and Planning. And she said, I'm so grateful that we had because she said it was so much easier for us to go in and make those changes and to get that pulled together relatively quickly. And she said, honestly, she said, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, she said, we didn't do one revision. We did a couple of revisions because the longer things stretched out, they had to go back and do a couple of passes at redoing their budget. Because she said, we knew that we weren't going to meet, you know, some of those milestones that we had set out for the year. So we had to go in and redo that rebudgeting. So I would just tell you that, you know, there's, uh, as my mother would say, there's always a silver lining. And so the silver lining is here that, you know, you now have a tool that can help you when you need to react quickly Yes. Uh, you'll be able to get that information uh, in in your hands and, and in your team's hands pretty quickly. I would agree with that 100%. I think it is one of the greatest things that we can purchase during this time and we can help our you know clients with and being flexible with that budget. So I agree. I see it, you know, being used already with some of our clients. Looks like we don't have any additional questions right now. Obviously, if you guys have any, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, my email is kwatts, W-A-T-T-S at mainersolutions.com. Um, or you can reach out to James. I know he's on this call as well. Wes, any of us can help you out and get you pointed in the right direction. So I want to take a huge moment to thank you so much, Linda, for working with us and getting this done. You have been wonderful to work with, and I look forward to working with you more a little bit, actually. So absolutely, absolutely yeah. happy to do it. And uh, again, uh, thank you uh, to all the Mainer customers. Thank you for your support of Sage Intact. We love you guys. We, uh, well, no problem. Thank you so much, Linda. Thanks. Have a right. day. Bye. <laughs> Bye.